Welcome to Yagba's Epic Tales. The title of today's story is The Fat Palace Cook Who Became a Warrior. Once upon a time, in a small village called Udobudu, there lived a girl called Nina. Nina lived with her father, stepmother, and four half sisters. Her father married her stepmother after Nina's mother died a few years ago. Nina's father was worried about Nina, and this was because Nina was quite very fat and so so slow. She looked like one with a body of a hundred people. She could barely walk or get up easily whenever she sits. And because of how so fat she was, Inena decided to eat only little food and just once a day and just so she could live. Her stepmother and half-sisters were always mocking and calling her ugly. Thanks be to the gods for not letting such a child come from me, a stepmother would always say. The maidens in her village didn't want her as a friend also, as they complained that she was always slowing them down. She could not be part of their fun, games, and other social activities. But there was one friend she had who was still there for her despite all her challenges. This friend was Amadi. Amadi was an orphan left to fend for himself since he was an adolescent and so he understood what it meant to be alone and neglected. Though Amadi was a palace guard and was not always around to keep in in a company, he would always steal every little chance he got out of the palace to go shake on his friend. Soon, all four of Inena's younger sisters got married, but no man came for Inena, which made her father more worried and disgusted. How did such creation come out of my loins? There is no one as fat and lazy as she is in my lineage. Neither was there anyone in her mother or her mother's relatives. Inena's father said, more confused. Inina cried most times. She wished there was something she could do to help her reduce her size. In the past, Amadi had tried to help her lose some weight by engaging her in a walking and running exercise. But Inina had passed out and was unable to leave her bed for nine days. She had also consumed many herbal medicines, but none of them helped her shed her weights. Hinena had heard tales of a great magician who possessed the power to grant men their wish, but this magician was seven villages away. Usually, it would take a strong and fit person five days to get to the magician's village from Udobudu. But Inena was 10 times slower than the average person, which means that it would take her about 50 days to get to the magician's village, which was a great tax for Inena. But Inena was determined at least she wouldn't return to her village fat and slow again, she said to herself. So, she told her best friend Amadi, but he kicked against the idea. However, being stubborn and resilient, Nena, at the dead of that night that day when everyone was fast asleep, set out and began a journey to get a wish. 
Inanna was lucky to cross the border of their village just before dawn. Though she was very tired and exhausted, she kept walking, determined to change her looks and destiny. By the time it was dark again, Inanna was still in the first village. She was exhausted and could not go any further. Inanna fell to the ground and started to cry. Gods of my father, why have you created me this way? What was my crime that you choose to give me the body of a hundred people? Inanna said, speaking to no one and crying alone in the dark. And because of the much cries and exhaustion, soon she fell into a deep sleep. Inanna was awakened by a gentle tap. She opened her eyes, but it was dark. She could not see the face of whom it was that had woken her up. She tried to adjust her eyes to the dark, and then she saw an old woman sitting close to her. It is a pity that many of us focus on what we don't like about ourselves and lose sight of the hidden treasure that is deposited within us. Go back home, my daughter, and show to the world the treasure in you that they have failed to see. For what you seek in this journey of yours would not be granted, the old woman said to Nina. What do you mean by the treasure deposited in me? Inina asked. But before she could complete her sentence, the old woman disappeared. Frightened, Inina was about to scream when she woke up and realized it was all a dream. She looked around her. She was still in her room, in her father's compound and still in her village. She had planned to take off on the journey for her quest the night before, but she had fallen deep asleep and had lost track of time. Is her dream a sign and a warning to her? Over the years, Nina had learned to trust her dreams, so she cancelled the thoughts of going to see the magician. Meanwhile, the king of the village, King Ikenna, was a very good and kind king. However, his wife, the queen, was a cruel woman who gave trouble and harsh treatment to everyone around her, despite the king's warnings and advice. She would pour hot water or throw sharp objects at the servants of the palace at the slightest provocation. And due to this reason, all the maidens who once worked in the palace fled for their lives. Some of the palace guards also fled, except Sue, who loved the king and were loyal and indebted to him for his good deeds to them in the past, one of which was Amadi. King Ikena could not get a good meal for days after the last palace maid left and all efforts to make the maidens who had worked in the palace before return proved abortive, as he was scared for their lives because of their experience with the queen. And so, King Ikena sent a messenger to announce all over the village that the palace needs a cook, and that anyone who would volunteer to come work in the palace would be greatly rewarded and protected from any harm. Though Inena was very fat and also very slow, but she was a great cook. Everyone who had tasted her, tasted her meal confessed that she was indeed blessed with the skill of preparing the best meals. Even her stepmother wondered how she could cook so well than she did. Amadi tried to convince Inina to come work in the palace as a cook. I may be a good cook, but I can't work in the palace 
as I am too slow and would always delay in getting the royal meals ready, Inina replied. But Amadi kept insisting, believing that her life in the palace would be more better than her life in her father's compound, where she is being taunted daily by her stepmother and other maidens of the village. At last, Inina agreed to go work as a cook in the palace after much persuasion from Amadi. When Inina got to the palace and Amadi presented her as the one ready to be the palace cook, the king and queen laughed, for they had heard tales of Inina, the young girl who is overly fat and too slow to move. How can such a person cook or work in the palace, they thought. And so, the king rejected her. But, after being convinced by Amadi, whose judgment he had come to trust, King Ikena decided to give Inina a trial on probation. The king was elated. He had never tasted such good and delicious meals before in the past. Inena was indeed a gifted cook, the king said to himself, and so he became more strict with his queen so that she would not chase Inena away. Inena worked tirelessly day and night. She knew she was very slow, so she wakes up at the earliest hour of dawn to start preparing breakfast and go ahead to start preparing lunch and dinner immediately after she had prepared and served breakfast. She was always working non-stop as she would not want to get on the bad side of the queen or disappoint the king. One cool night, whilst everyone was soundly asleep, their village was attacked by some foreign warriors. The warriors were very big, tall and strong they were giants. The warriors took off with loot and managed to capture a few men and women. By morning, the entire village was in chaos. There was wailing everywhere and the king was heartbroken. He wondered why they had been attacked without any provocation. Obodon didn't pa was a land many, many miles away. The inhabitants of the land are giants and stay far, far away from other dwellers. To King Ikena, that was the only place giants could spring from. Although, the people of Udo Bodo and Obodo Ndidimpa had a history. In the midst of the dilemma, a giant messenger appeared in the village with a message that left everyone terrified. Many, many centuries ago, the people of Udo Bodo and Obodondidimpa had come to settle at the land which is currently occupied by the Udo Bodo people at about the same time. The giants and the Udobodo people fought to claim ownership and rights to the land, though it was evident that the Udobodo people got there three days earlier before the giants. The battle was a fierce one and one would have thought that the giants would win and crush their opponents because of their strength and size, but that was not the case. Udo Bodo people had defeated the giants and sent them running far away. This was possible due to the divine power of a woman called Nedioku. No one could tell where she came from, but she possessed great divine power, which she used to help her people. And so, the giants could not defeat them for she was in the front leading and guiding her people to war against the giants. But Inedioku had passed on many centuries ago, and only tales of her battle prowess 
at what is being told over the generations. She had left with no one to succeed her and was soon being forgotten. But now, King Ikena was terrified for the giants had come again to warn them to depart from the land which they claimed belonged to their forefathers, else they would destroy them this time. There is no Nedioku to help them this time, King Ikena said to himself. What will he do? He thought. See you in our next video for the concluding parts. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video. Bye.